Good morning. It is marvelous Monday. Number one, it's not raining yet. It's real foggy. And I can tell you about that on my drive into work today. Today was the Daytona 500 from Pickens County to Gilmer County. And to you little geezer in that town and country van that tried to run over me all the way up the road, I know what my speed limit was and I know what yours was. And I kept hoping that the Gilmer County Sheriff was gonna be sitting up there if they didn't get you. Today was wild. Everybody was in a hurry except me because I left home early and I was just driving along, just enjoying it. And all of a sudden, all that fog, not where the fog came from, we didn't have any ball ground. We had sunshine. But today is going to be a day to recap the weekend and then to move forward. And we're going to talk about something that we love, the Barker Brothers and Bluegrass. And you know why? One of the Barkers is here today. And he brought a guest, and so we're going to spend some time on music. We're going to coerce you people who know how to play an instrument to become part of something that's going to be happening very, very soon. And I have a little eight-year-old boy who's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. This kid is beyond amazing, and it's because he's part of a family that has bluegrass in their blood. I'm sure it runs through their veins. He did a talent show at school, and he was beyond cool. He can play every instrument known to man, <laughs> and I just sit back and go, wow, wow. I can't wait for you to meet the little feller, and you're going to get to in the very near future. So today, we're going to recap with some photos, and I don't know, have we got those ready yet? Yes, let's go. Let's go through the weekend, and then we're going to talk music and, and a lot of music. So here we go. Okay, this is my, this is the thing that irritated my skin all weekend long. This young man on the left did an amazing commencement speech, and he honored women and the life of a family and your children and your mothers and fathers raising children together. And the NFL chose to um, be mean to him and be ornery with him and say negative things about him. And some people got on that other stations that I don't like, you know, those liberal stations I don't like, and they made nasty comments about him. Well, my comment is I stayed at home until the kids were in the fifth, sixth, and seventh grades. And let me tell you about that, the hardest job ever. Being a mom deserves respect, it deserves honor, and it deserves the support of your husband or your spouse. And I tell you, my goodness, goodness. So this weekend, honor your mama. Last weekend was Mother's Day, but honor your mama today. Now this was over an area not far from Braxtown. And isn't that absolutely beautiful? And that's what God does, he shows up. I've got a book here that says that. So y'all heard, y'all have seen the book many times, God keeps showing up, there you go. There's evidence. Now this is at Malone's Pond. And that was in the evening. We had a rainy, rainy day. It would rain, the sun would come out, it would get scorching hot, it would rain again, the sun would come out, and then yesterday evening, there's our rainbow over the pond. It was absolutely beautiful, and that is thanks to one of our new homeowners. She snapped that picture and sent it to me, and I said, wow, that is too cool. That is too cool. We also had a big to-do at the Georgia Mountain Fair. And the Georgia Mountain Fair was really, really busy, and a lot of folks came out. The weather was a little iffy. Wasn't going to be, you know, is it going to rain? Is it going to, what's it going to do? The wind was a little up, but there you go. Everybody enjoyed food, enjoyed fellowship. There was a little bit of music on the grounds, and I can guarantee you there were some awesome cooks there with some of their own things, some creations that they do, and using those big green eggs. I've never cooked on one, but I've eaten some stuff on it, and oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Now that looks good. That mm. looks good. Yum. That looks good. Heck, it all looks good. I'm hungry. Man, now what is that? I don't know what that is, but that really looks good. I don't know who won, I don't know who excelled, but I know that they all should have, because it all looks yummy. and. It happens once a year, and it's like everything else that happens at the Georgia Mountain Fair. It brings money to all the areas that we serve, from Ball Ground to Turtletown. Now see that? That's me and Evelyn, and you know where we're at now? We're in our new office at 116 Mills Lane in Ball Ground, and so come by and see us 
We're in the first house on the right inside Malone's Pond, and one of us will be there most of the time. The other one will be at the office uptown. So come in and see us, and uh, we can't wait to show you these amazing houses. Now this, this is hard to do, but I was reading that about one o'clock this morning, and I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I dare you to pray for the person who has hurt your heart the most. I've learned to do that. It's not easy. It is not easy, but you can learn to do it. So no matter who, what, where, or when, if you pray for them, the day will be a better day. The day will be a better day, and you might even see them become human again. Who knows? Okay, this is so precious, and this is Miss Keeley Hill House as she got engaged and I just think this is the sweetest thing and, and little Mr. Sutton is engaged is uh, asking her to marry him and that is just so precious this is my precious granddaughter as she did I think this is her second or third triathlon and she does all of this in honor and in memory of her mama and she started it when she was on the board for suicide prevention and just got involved and every single year she crosses that finish line I don't know how she does it, I can't imagine. She has arthritis in her legs and her hips, you name it. And she does it and she does it and she does it. And uh, Michael sent me these photos after she finished the after she crossed the finish line yesterday and it was just amazing. And it is one of those things, you have to train a long time to do it and uh, she did it. She, they swim, they bike, they run, they do all kinds of things and uh, I'm like, wow, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So, yeah, and she's got, uh, yeah, she does have some. Now this, this is a sweet, sweet memory. This weekend was Cherie Ralston's birthday, and I thought about how hard it was for her to get through a very special day without her sweetheart. And uh, David was North Georgia's sweetheart. He was such a good, good man, and I miss him so very, very much. Now, y'all, this is why I'm so thankful to have the job I have. This is our office now. This is a beautiful home, professionally done by a great design team with Bircher Homes. This is our office. Now this will make you smile. You just walk in the door and you go, wow, wow, ow, wow. I said, this is like checking into a $2,000 a night Hilton, except the Hilton doesn't have anything that nice. Maybe we better check into the Ritz Carlton. But is that not absolutely beautiful? Those are the kind of homes that Bircher Homes is known for. And um, amazing, we have four ready for move in and two scheduled to close very soon. And it's just an exciting time for Ball Ground. This is a community that is walking distance to downtown. It means you can leave your worries and your car behind. Now look at that. When you walk in Annie's to eat now, you don't call Rebecca what you used to call her. You call her Rebecca McClure. So happy, happy day to the McClures as they became one. And it's so, so sweet. I just, that is the prettiest setting. And uh, talk about hardworking young lady. Yeah, yeah, hardworking. And she learned it from the best, sweet Annie. Many a Gilmer County has eaten an Annie's biscuit. Many a Pickens County has eaten an Annie's biscuit. And there's our office. And it is absolutely beautiful. That's the Evans, and that's the C elevation. It is the most popular house plan, and it is absolutely amazing. The only thing missing there was marshmallows. I didn't have any marshmallows <laughs> yesterday, so, you know, I, I'm thinking. If you're going to be sitting out there by the fireplace, you need a marshmallow. But isn't that beautiful? We can't wait to share this with y'all. We're going to have an open house on June the 15th and have refreshments and invite folks in and um, really exciting. It's really an exciting time. Bircher Homes had never built in Cherokee County and they have now built a bunch of beautiful homes in Cherokee County. So welcome to <clears throat> Ball Ground and Country Living right downtown. It doesn't get any better than that. It does and that's the closet or as I call it the baby nursery. <laughs> I'm like that's where you put the bassinet, the baby bed and all these toys. <laughs> But isn't that beautiful? And this, y'all, at Malone's Pond, we're preserving the past and embracing the future. And I watched as this mama sat on those eggs and protected her eggs. And then when she hatched them, I was sitting there waiting and watching. And it was so funny. She was so protective. And I got that close to do a video the other day. And then she kind of got ill with me. 
Yeah. And I was like, now don't do that, be sweet. But they are so precious. And this again is at Malone's Pond. And uh, that's just the sweetest little family. So come out, get to know the area, get to know the beautiful homes and uh, come and make Malone's Pond your home. We are truly in ball ground, walking distance to downtown, to the restaurants, to the shops, to the pickleball courts, basketball courts, and to the city park. So, and I got to remind y'all, on the 25th, on the 25th, we're going to have a great concert in downtown ball ground. The Guardians of the Jukebox are going to be there, and they're like that group that everybody follows and everybody wants to see, so you better get your chairs and put them out at the park very, very early, or you'll be sitting on the railroad track. So just a little warning to y'all. Well, we've got some guests, and we're going to talk music. We always talk music. We talk music a lot, and there might be a reason, because we've been pretty musical for about 18 years now, and for about 18 years, the young man sitting here has been at ETC. Scott Barker, you started with ETC when Jonathan was about this big. That's true. And we, the banjo was bigger than him. Yeah. That, yes. Yes. We, uh, that was quite a challenge, Jonathan and the banjo. Jeremy was big enough to drag his guitar around. Right. right. Jonathan, the banjo probably outweighed him when he started. Yep. He, yep. Uh, he cried for a banjo <laughs> for like a week. Isn't that and crazy? I said, oh, you can't play a banjo. He said, just get me one, Dad. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, it, it's a story, yeah. You did. Now, for folks who are sitting at home watching and they're going, that's not Angie Barker. Who's this lady? <laughs> this lady right here, she's really nice. She's going to be one of the representatives. Her dad was Fiddling Howard Cunningham. Mm -hmm. Very familiar in the area, and she, she was gracious enough to kind of include me. We're going to have a fiddle competition coming up. Mm -hmm. And anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. We want everybody to come out. It's for the Georgia State Championship. And it's not just the fiddle, it's for all the instruments. I was reading that and it included mandolin, dobro. Uh, yeah, guitar and flat picking and finger style. Mm -hmm. Also in that, yeah, and band competition. If you got a good band, Come on. Raven Welch, we're talking to you. We're talking to you. Get your band up. It would yep. be great. Yep. We, June the 15th? Yes. Is that right? June the 15th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, is your dad still alive? My father is not still alive. He passed several years ago. Do you have good video of him? I do, yes. Oh, that's yes. That's awesome. We have a lot of good video from prior Fiddler conventions where he played and competed. And uh, our event's going to be June 15th at the Union County Fine Arts Center in Blairsville, Georgia. And for people who don't know about it, isn't it near the theater? Isn't it very close to the theater? The or way I it? find it is go to Rib Country and hang Rib a bike and go up yeah. that way yeah. on the hill. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, you can't go in any event and see this much talent for five bucks oh, yeah. anywhere in the yeah. state. Because yeah. you're going to see the eventual state champion for the fiddle, mm -hmm. for the mandolin, for the guitar, and, to, and the band. And all that happens on Saturday, because I looked, it starts at 9 a.m. So at 9 a.m., you've got to be on stage ready to go. If you're, Are you starting with the young ones? How are you doing that? We're starting with a uh, beginning musician, which is 12 and under. That's anybody that plays a string instrument except for fiddle. Mm -hmm. Right after beginning musician will be beginning fiddler. Okay. And we play continually all day. Um, we take a short 30-minute lunch break. We had 75 contestants last year, and that pretty much filled up the entire wow. day till around 5-ish in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. and, and true, 9 to 5, you're going to be, it's like having a job that you only pay $5 to get to be there, and you get to sit and enjoy. You, I, enjoy. After this, you won't get to see this state champion for 5 bucks. Yeah. Because they're going to be on a larger <laughs> stage, yeah. and it's going to cost a lot more money. Yeah. So it's a good chance to get to see, you're going to get to preview a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. They were a little girl there last year, and you know who I'm talking about. Uh -huh. She was dressed in pink, and she had a little fiddle. And she said, she come out there, and she said, Mr. Barker, let me show you something. Anyway, and she started, I, I wasn't expecting what I got. <laughs> And she started fiddling, and I, I almost signed her up. <laughs> <laughs> she was great. She was captivating. Wow, and isn't so that crazy? It took me back to when Jonathan was that small. Yeah. Well, she was even smaller than what Jonathan started. Oh so, my gosh. anyway, it was 
it was a throwback, but she was very talented. And she got up on that stage, and the moment wasn't too big for her. She uh -huh. really, she could, she was a crowd pleaser. Now, who won last year? Who was the winner? Um, his name was Nathan Goble, and he was from Kentucky. Okay. And he had been on the Opry the night before he came down here. Goodness. Very talented young man. Uh -huh. And, um... I've seen a lot of people perform in these kind of events who have started out early, young, and now go on to play with, you know, some of the big names. Yeah. Yeah. And this, when you get to the groups, are they all gospel bluegrass? Are there some that are just straight bluegrass, don't do gospel? Do they kind of go across? You want to answer that? Um, this is all considered bluegrass music, but there are some bluegrass bands that do play a few gospel songs. I know Raven kind of mixed hers up and yeah. we I really liked that they added the gospel to it because to me that's you know yeah. he can tell you I didn't used to like bluegrass till I met the <laughs> and it was so funny because I was like a Motown, a sixties, that kind of music, you know, Percy Sledge, you know, you'll know that Scott mm. doesn't do Percy Sledge. <laughs> Not very much. <laughs> and it was so funny because then all of a sudden and the Barker Brothers wrote the theme song for my show. Oh, wow. And they wrote it after Barry Scott had tried for two years. And I, Barry Scott won all kinds of awards in Nashville. He was award-winning, great, great entertainer, but he couldn't write a song for me, but he wrote for himself and then Scott's kids did it. Sometimes, <laughs> uh, I think that sometimes God just gives you, oh, he yeah. puts people together, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. for, for yeah. certain things yeah. and that, we were very fortunate. That that usually don't happen. I can remember there. sitting downstairs at y'all's house and I was just sitting there and you start, and I said, oh my gosh, it is absolutely perfect. They'd never even been to my farm. And it talks about me standing at the screen door. They'd never even been there. Oh wow! And I had a screen door where I stood and held a coconut cake. I mean, it was, it was dead on perfect. That's a beautiful thing, that coconut cake. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. But you know, when we look back to that, that, and I told y'all, I said I want it to be snappy and something that when people are standing in the kitchen washing dishes and they hear that music, they say, "Oh, that lady's on TV." <laughs> and you delivered. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I didn't. It was more uh, more them than me. Yeah. But yeah, they. It's been a lot of fun. We have met so many nice folks through music, mm -hmm. and and we 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 sang at a lot of churches used to also, and so the Lord really blessed us. We were able to to meet good folks and very few. America is not what. You see, you see on the news. It's, that's not it. There's still more good that's people right. than bad. That's right. They focus on that, I think. That's right. It's sensationalized stuff. Yeah. And, and people are good at heart. Well, I know we probably, the bad apples stick out. Yep. And yep. the good And they get the attention. They get the attention to me that we should just leave them alone, ignore them, and not, you know, not focus on that stuff. We've, we've been very fortunate, to, you know, to be blessed and be around a lot of good folks. Mm -hmm. Usually, the... Uh, the cream will rise to the top, oh, yeah. and, and you, you get well. You one know, of the good things folks. that you do that always puts you around good folks is the Brass Town Community Center, because this is a community full of good people. Yes, it is. And as I remember it, they have a good concession stand. Well, with, <laughs> they have peach cobbler with ice cream on it. Oh, yeah. I told I the ladies, that. I said, they said, "Oh, we're selling out," and I said, "Well, save me some of that because." We were busy, and you don't, you can't yeah. eat a peach cobbler that big around and then get back up and try yeah. to sing. Yeah. And well, this is this coming Saturday night, May the twenty fifth, at seven p.m. And I laughed, y'all. I got up this morning, and the humidity's just destroyed <laughs> my hair. And I said, "Why did y'all go to this road? Set a wig? Does that remind <laughs> me that I should have set a wig on my head this morning?" <laughs> <laughs> but it's 255 Settawig Road in Brasstown, North Carolina, and it's under 12 free yep. and $10 for adults. That that money goes, they keep that community center up. It's mm -hmm. it's vital in that community. Oh, yeah. And they use it for a lot of different stuff. Yeah. Like folks that are down and out, and uh -huh. uh, they have, I, I don't want to get into it too much, but they have facilities where folks that, that they don't have running water. Mm -hmm. They can yeah. come in and yeah. take a shower and, you know, in that, in, it's in another part of the building. And they've actually built on some. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really good. And they'll have a big old yard sale. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I, we went to that, and man, I'm telling you, of course, you know how Angie is. She said, yeah. we don't need anything. <laughs> we need to be having a yard stamp. Yeah. But we went to that, and it, you'll find a treasure. I'm yeah, telling you, yeah, you got yeah. to bring something home. Yeah. Um, you know, when we look back at your music, we're going to go now to, we're going to do a commercial break, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the Barkers are not new to helping others because when y'all came down to Jasper and we did the friend raiser for Hans Rufert, he was battling cancer. He was given a 1% chance of survival. Wow. It has now been 17 years and he's still with us. So you talk about giving back and, and that's what the Barkers are famous for. I so. must have been young when we did You that. were. You were a baby. <laughs> <laughs> just a child. He was just a child. And you know, when we talk about that, Scott, you've dealt with cancer. Uh, my family's dealt with cancer. I dealt with cancer. So many people have faced cancer and are still here. And yeah. and I look at, my husband's been gone 23 years, but had he had the same kind of cancer he had and gotten early detection, and that's so very, very important. So we want to remind everybody out there, get your yearly checkups. Um, I had the same kind my mom had. My mom didn't make it. I did. And, and it's so weird because early checkups and the newer medicine somewhere sitting in a school is a child who is going to solve the problem of cancer. I agree. You know, I agree. somewhere there's somebody who's going to do this. I think God's let us make progress. Mm -hmm. and, and you can see it. And uh, it, of course, it makes you really long for the folks that's gone on earlier. Oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. Uh, we're, you know, here as a, as a nation and in, as a country, we're seeing progress mm -hmm. in that. And that, that's what I was talking about earlier. You know, God's got a plan, I don't know, and, and we're just a little part of it, but we have to realize that somewhere, like you said, some child's probably got that. Mm -hmm. I think if we keep things in the middle of the road, God will let us yep. see something yep. good. Yep. And, and yesterday, I spent some time with a, a precious couple, and let me see if I can remember what the children do. One's a doctor, one's a teacher, and one is a COO of a big, huge company. And I thanked them as they left, and I said, thank you for raising good kids. And he said, it's all my wife. And it was so sweet to see a man compliment his wife. He said, my wife is kind and caring, and she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. So she worked at home and was allowed to work at home with an office job right. and got to take care of her children. And I just, I said, what an example they set, yeah. you know. And, and that's, it's been really funny because the development that we're working in, Mike Smith came, the guy who wrote, and y'all know this is my favorite book, God Keeps Showing Up, and boy does he ever. But uh, Mike Smith blessed the community before we started building. And I noticed this, and I told our COO, I said, you won't believe this, but I said, I stood on the porch of lot four with a buyer, and he said, God is in this community. And I looked at him, and I said, you are so very right. Yep. I said, the day that we broke ground, Mike Smith said, bring God to this community, bring godly people to this community. And that's what we're seeing. And it is so amazing to me because outside the world you see people who don't believe, but we live in a community that it says we're here because, you know, we want to be around people like us. My dad used to say that. He said, if you want to be successful, he said, involve God with it first. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. said, your decisions, he yeah. said, ask him to bless whatever you're doing and right. make for sure, yeah. you know, and that's that's the key, yeah. that's the key. Yeah, well this was the first development that they had ever had a pastor stand and I just felt, I felt like I needed to do that. Yeah. And uh, Mike and Diane are a big part of the garden club and we were gonna be talking about historical plants there and so I wanted them to be there. And then every time, and it's so funny because I, I pay attention to what you wear and every, every woman who has come to look at a house there had on a cross. Every single woman. That's good. And I said, wow, wow. And it just, you know, you, you kind of, you're like, okay, God, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. He keeps showing up. That's awesome. <laughs> he keeps showing up. We're going to take a commercial break and we're going to go to about eight minutes of the Barker Brothers. And then we're going to come back and we're going to talk more about this convention. And I hope that we can encourage you to get out there. If you have a grandchild, if you have a child who is very talented but hasn't gotten out on the scene and said, hey, I think I've got this going on, we need you to be involved in this. And we'll talk about that when we come back.
Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I grown up, grown up, and every way and every way, care and take care of you. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge.
safely to the other side. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here in Jasper this evening. We really enjoyed ourselves coming out, being part of this. We really appreciate the folks asking us. We're going to do one now. I'm going to let this banjo player sing one just to show you that he just he can sing besides pick the banjo a little bit. And I'll introduce everybody after that. But right now, let's do one called Walking in Jerusalem. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready, Lord. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. Oh, John, oh, John, oh, what'd you say? Walking in Jerusalem just like John. I'll meet you there at the break of day. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready, Lord. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. Well, some come walking and some come lame. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. Well, some come walking in Jesus' name. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready, Lord. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. If you get there before I do. Walking in Jerusalem just like John Tell all my friends I'm coming to Walking in Jerusalem just like John I want to be ready I want to be ready I want to be ready, Lord Walking in Jerusalem just like John Thank you. Did y'all recognize those little boys? <laughs> those are the little boys known as the Barker Brothers. And now the Barker Brothers are known as Daddy. <laughs> Jonathan's just known as Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got two kids. He has. Yes. And Jeremy is known as a brilliant young man helping others. I guess, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll give him credit for yeah, part of that yeah. anyway. And Jeremy's still doing music, and Jonathan really is busy with the kids, and so yeah. he's not, and, and doesn't live nearby. Right? Yeah, yeah. We've got some more guys filling in. Uh, we've, we're, I'm surrounded by good musicians now. It's yeah, so, it's so awesome. easy. It used yeah. to, yeah. I felt like I was herding cats, and now it's, <laughs> everybody's very capable. I'm, I'm the weak link now, if anybody is, and you know, I'm, of course, Ma Barker, she's yes. still she's playing the bass, yes. and Jeremy's doing most of the lead singing and all the guitar playing, and we have Greg Brooks on the fiddle, uh -huh. and Kurt Barker, which is another Barker, yes. and he's on the banjo, and he's he's fantastic on the banjo, wow. and oh, uh, Greg, he's really good on the fiddle. So now, are y'all going to be one of the groups in the entry for the? No, no. 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna let some folks that really deserve that <laughs> get yes. up there. I'm not gonna waste a lot of folks' time. Oh um, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's a, it, it's if I don't care if you're just a mediocre player, you need to you need to go and and, and bring your instrument. You know there'll probably be a little jamming around, and and mm -hmm. for folks that that don't want to enter it, they'll have jamming. You know, and a lot of people be outside playing and. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you'll get a lot of entertainment, you know, and you can come and go. You're going to get a little wristband when you show up that day, mm -hmm. and you can come and go. They're going to have some food trucks, mm -hmm. some pretty good food, I mm -hmm. think, too. Anyway, we, me and Jeremy, we ate at one of the food trucks last year, and he said, man, that's good. And I said, you can follow that truck I said, let's find out where he's going to be next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were good. They yeah. were good. Yeah. Now, if people want to enter, how do they do? What's the process for entering? They can register online okay. uh, at georgiastatefiddlersconvention.org. Okay. And it's a very simple process. If they can't register online, registration starts at 8 a.m. on June 15th. They can come and register in person, uh -huh. not a problem at all. Uh -huh. um, doors will open at 8 and registration will start at 8. You know, you know what I did to myself when I changed my hours? I used to come on at 11, 
which was nice. <laughs> I didn't have to get up so early. And now I'll be heading up the road, and I'm going, why did you do this to yourself? You made the bankers <laughs> jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and now I start my day earlier so I can do the other things I do. But when you started this early, is it hard? Because I know I've had musicians on early in the morning, and they said it's hard to sing when you're on early. Well, last year we got there really early. It was, it was a foggy morning last mm -hmm. year, and we got there early. And uh, they were people, man, I, I wasn't expecting very many people to be there. And, and some of them were the contestants, uh -huh. and other people just showed up to jam, yeah. you know, and have a big time. Anyway, man, it wasn't long. I, I mean, we got there and they were people playing music. Anyway, that's I awesome. could not believe that. Yeah. And, and that's where the little girl approached me outside and she said, and they, they knew who we were and they'd come up and talk to us. And, uh -huh. But they were people from Kentucky, like she said, like Martha said, they were people there from Kentucky and all over. I mean, it was, it was really, uh, it was fun, just a fun day. A laid-back atmosphere, nobody, it doesn't, I, I don't know, maybe they were more nervous. If I'd been entering, maybe it would have been nervous, yeah. but just to come and watch and get to hear the value of the entertainment. Like I said, there have been some mm -hmm. good, good musicians come through there. Now, is there something on YouTube with your daddy so people could see your daddy play? Have you put anything on uh, YouTube? There, if you Google him, there is some YouTube videos out there. Uh, we've got a lot of tapes, honestly, that we need to convert to yeah. CDs so that we can start using them yeah. more. Yeah. But yeah, they'll probably could catch him on YouTube. Now I'm going to ask you videos. a loaded question. Can you play an instrument? I cannot play. How can you be the daughter of an award-winning musician? <laughs> he was actually even the, the, I think it's the Georgia House of Representatives recognized Mr. Cunningham and yeah, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. and he was a great you know wow. and and we were talking there while we were on the commercial break you can look back used to it was passed down you couldn't YouTube there was no right, inter internet right, right. Uh, to YouTube stuff so the way you got it you learned it uh, did Where you did have your some dad learn? my dad he had an uh, his brother-in-law mm -hmm. of his oldest sister was a left-handed fiddle player. Wow. And so that's how Daddy picked up fiddle. Uh -huh. But he started out playing guitar. But um, he had some people older than him, you know, in the family who played mm -hmm. music. Now, my brother does play. Um, I started out in the band. I played bass for a while, but uh -huh. gave it up for sports, actually. Yes. Yeah. But, um, you know, everybody does their own thing. Yeah. I, I can play the radio. <laughs> That's, sometimes right. that's a talent. <laughs> yeah. Some people don't play the radio right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I remember when I was a when I was just a young boy, and that's been a while now. That's been fifty plus years ago. Yeah. Everybody, we'd all gang up on the porch. The way you learned to play an instrument was to go to folks that could, mm -hmm. and it wasn't uh, it wasn't called jamming. It's called mm -hmm. picking. And they'd say, well, we're going to pick out on the porch if you want to come over. Yeah. We'd call them up, and they'd say, oh, yeah, we're going to get out on the porch and pick. Well, still in McKaysville, it's called picking in the park. Right. You know? Yeah, right. that's Because true. that's exactly what it is, picking in the park. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And they'd say, oh, do you pick? You know, and, and <laughs> yeah, blackberries or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we, you know, that's, we, we would go and, and enjoy that. Man, and. You know, and I'm going to tell you, this is one even more, and people would really turn up their nose this now. They they draw water out of the well uh -huh. in an old bucket oh, yeah, and put a dipper in it, mm -hmm. and and that's the way everybody got their sure water is. that yeah. evening. That you know, yeah. and yeah. we yeah. would sit on the porch, and I can yeah. tell you, and those people were using tobacco, yeah. most <laughs> all of them. <laughs> and, you know, but anyway, yeah, oh yeah, and they would dip that. We never thought a thing about yeah. it. We, and weren't sick. I yeah, mean, no, you know. We were healthy and we had the minerals <coughs> we need because you worked the earth and you gardened and you flower. Everybody had beautiful yards. And do you know anybody who ever swept your yard, swept their yard? Oh, yes. Yeah, because my, my Aunt Grace swept the yard. Her really? yard was this manicured. She didn't have any grass, but she had a beautiful swept yard. My grandmother and grandfather lived on Lick Skillet over out at Belfort Fire. 
And if they saw any grass coming up, yeah. they'd pull that stuff up. They didn't <laughs> want that grass in their yard. And it was as, it was as nice as a concrete. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it would rain, and of course, your bottom of your feet get oh, dirty yeah. if you walked yeah. on it. Yeah. But I, just as soon as it would dry up fast and it would be packed, it was it was nice that really so cool. different times but different times. yeah and people learned how to blow gnats out of their eyes because yeah. i've saw <laughs> that a lot of times and of course we'd sit on the porch and pick you know and, and people had you'd have an instrument in your hand your hands were full yeah and so right. yeah and uh, people <laughs> they learned to blow them gnats out of their eyes i learned that you know <laughs> you learned how to do that if you're holding an old martin guitar you yeah. you know That's you can't crazy. you can't stop and swipe at the no, gnats no, you know no. But yeah, we had such a good time. It well, was you know, fun. when we go back to talent, um, your daddy was talented and learned it from somebody else. There are some people, and in all the 18 years we've done television, we've always had talented young kids. We've had talented kids that didn't go any further. We've had talented kids that really went up in the ranks. And then we've had, do you know who Linda Autry is, the piano player? I'm not sure. I've okay, heard that she's name. She's amazing. She is like beyond amazing. And <clears throat> she played for funerals for us when my husband died and my mom died. And, and she was just that piano player that you knew when she sat down, she could do anything with that piano. Right. Some people will take lessons for years and years and years and they can play the piano, but they don't really control the piano, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So you see that, that inner talent. And we know that God does give certain people that talent. Your mm -hmm. daddy had it, obviously. He played by ear. He yeah, learned to play by ear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, people, even folks that, that learn to play it, and, and there, is, there is no substitute for having that God-given talent. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm a firm believer in that. Now, I think you can further that if you want to go and, and learn the right mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. to do it. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But I think you need that. You got to have that that inner. You have got to have what God's got to give it to you. I yeah. really, I'll always believe that because yeah. He did not give me that. He did. There are several things I'm going to have to talk to him about. <laughs> he understands where we are. <laughs> I reckon. I reckon. I reckon. Now, again, tell the website for people to get on and register, or they can just get up early and come do it then? Yep. Georgia State Fiddlers Convention org is the website. They can also go to Facebook. Mm -hmm. Go out and check our Facebook page, Georgia State Fiddlers Convention. Um, going back to what you were saying, you know, it does start early. The big thing with these events is the instruments. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want your instruments to get cold. Yeah. So, uh, or you don't want them to get overly hot, I guess, either. <laughs> no. But they can come right inside. That's a beautiful venue. They, there's rooms where they can go back and start practicing. Mm -hmm. If people don't want to compete, like Scott said, they can just come and jam. We'll yeah. have areas where they can just jam and enjoy the music. Mm -hmm. But this is a judged event. Mm -hmm. We'll have three judges mm -hmm. who judge the event, and uh, then we give cash prizes for the first three uh, places, first through third, Bluegrass Band, first place is $1,200. Wow. Which is pretty good. Yeah. That's good money. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's great money. So we've got several Bluegrass Bands registered already. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, if somebody's got a young child, there's categories for them. If they're seniors, it's senior fiddlers. Uh -huh. and at the end of the day, we fiddle off between the junior and senior fiddle, fiddler for the, um, the king or queen fiddle for the day, mm -hmm. for the year of this competition. Wow. So it's a great event. You get to see a lot of talent. And over the years, I've seen seven, eight-year-olds start out and say, wow, look where they are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You know. Well, the Parton family, perfect example. Oh, well, loads of talent. You know, <clears throat> it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Came out of the hills of Kentucky and just amazing. Great. West Virginia, Kentucky, they have so many talented people yes. who, just like you, gathered on a porch with family and learned. And right. that's, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it, it should be a fun day. I mean, you can, you know, the, the venue is perfect. You can sit and rest. Nice. It's air conditioned. And again, we go to Rib Country and then we turn right. Is that yeah. what you said? Yeah, yeah, it's part of the Union County School Complex. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, but we'll have signs out, directional okay. signs that day, and we've got a, actually a big sign right across from Rib Country mm -hmm. where you go up the hill to the school. Okay.
to get there, but it's a great venue. It'll be a lot of fun. And I just have to say we're a 501c3. Yes. So um, all the money for this event, we give a little over $7,000 of prize money away, plus we have our expenses. Mm -hmm. So we're a 501c3 and we do accept contributions, a tax deductible contribution, mm -hmm. if anybody's yes. interested in helping us out. Yeah. It's it's a great thing. It it's really good for the community, and it keeps the music alive in I the mean, area. Yeah. And it's really important. People, you know, I, I don't care who you are, the music is good for the soul. Mm -hmm. Whether you're listening or playing, it's just yeah. good for you. <coughs> we need that in our lives, Absolutely. and especially here in the mountains. And that's part of our heritage, mm -hmm. who we really are mm -hmm. here. And it's yeah. it's a great thing. And like Martha said. If someone wants to make a little donation, nothing's too small. Be of course, to yeah. uh, the big ones are nice too. Yeah, but yeah. It, it just helps us travel a little further down the road and, mm -hmm. and present the music and push it out. And it, you know, it, it's something. If, if you're anywhere within 100 miles here, mm -hmm. 50 miles for sure, it's good to have a state championship that close oh, because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's close. Now, what does it take to keep the state championship here? How 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 are y'all able to have it here? Um, well, this was an event that was held. Uh, well, let me back up. The Georgia State Fiddlers Convention started uh, years ago down in Stone Mountain, mm -hmm. and then um, <coughs> it moved from there. And then Georgia Mountain Fair started it right, back in the it 70s. Yes. And about 2018, 19, they made the decision as an organization not to hold the event anymore. Mm -hmm. And so there was a handful of us that went out and formed a 501c3 mm -hmm. and to, to form the organization to keep the Fiddler's Convention going. Barry Palmer's a banjo player from Cleveland, Georgia. Mm -hmm. He's been involved in this event since he was a kid. Mike Johnson's helping us. He's also a banjo player and has been involved. We got Scott involved, my sister, and some of my family members are involved. But um, we just wanted to keep it alive, so we you know, organized mm -hmm. to do so. I had been there when it was at the Georgia Mountain Fair, and that's yeah. why I was wondering how y'all ended up. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a very successful event, <laughs> but and last you know, year, didn't you say there was around a thousand people? I, I don't remember. How many do you it know? It was Martha? probably more like 500 okay. there. We had 75 contestants, which was wonderful. Yeah. For a first time in a new location, mm -hmm. it, was, it was a great number of contestants. Mm -hmm. And they come from all over the southeast, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. This year, we've got somebody registered already coming from Ohio. So it can also be a good... Um, Thing for the community, yeah. you know, as far as the tourism part of right. it. Uh, there's an event over in Athens, Alabama. I don't know if you've ever been over there, mm -hmm. but it's a college campus. I went over there as a child, and I've been back several times over the past 10 years promoting the Fiddler's Convention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, that campus is full, full of people. Uh, it's a huge community yeah. event. And uh, we were there last October, and it's just really big. Musicians are sort of like football mm -hmm. fans or football yeah, players. Yeah. They'll travel. You know. <coughs> They're they, dedicated. They, they yeah. will they travel, dedicated. and they are dedicated. And Scott even mentioned a few weeks ago when the, we met that he thinks this industry, this part of music, bluegrass, is growing. It's growing oh, again. Yeah. It's, start, yeah. it's like a wave. You know, we had a wave about the time Oh brother, where art thou? And oh, that yes. just kind of yeah, yeah. pushed yeah, it, yeah. you know. And and you can watch it'll kindly ebb and flow, mm -hmm. but there's I'm gonna tell you, you would not believe. Now we get to have a lot of the pickings, and Angel say we don't have a place for everybody to use the restroom, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and you know, and so it's fun. We get a lot of people together, and, and we get to see, you know, I can see them coming out, and the musicianship now. <coughs> I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, we played, and we, we go, we, we visit and play. We played at a little place called Rocky Branch. And there's a little boy walking around there. He was like 12 year old. And, and I thought, well, that, boy, that's a good looking mandolin he's playing. Anyway, and I got to looking, and it was a very expensive mandolin. 
and he could play that thing real good. And I thought, somebody needs to break that kid's fingers. Yeah. <laughs> he can beat anybody. He's be taken over. Well, uh, two years later, this young man has been on the Opry. Yeah, and he's well, playing with awesome? playing yeah. with Ricky Skaggs and all them. Yeah. But he's yeah. it, it, it's out there. The opportunity yeah. is out yeah. there. Yeah. This is a format to push those musicians and let it let right. it come up. Right. You know, and I'm thinking we all watched American Idol this last uh, yeah. few weeks, you know, and a, a young man from Georgia was yeah. second runner up or was yeah, second. And and I thought he'd win. I thought he yeah. had it nailed. I thought he did it, but it's how many votes are out there. So how how do your judges determine? We don't have much time left. How do your judges what do they choose? What are they looking for? Uh, there's criteria that's set up. And let me say before I forget, the rules for the competition mm -hmm. are on the website. Okay. Get a lot of emails about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, if somebody's interested in entering the competition, not sure if they're good enough, go to the website. Mm -hmm. All the rules are there. Okay. Uh, the bios of the judges are there. But it's based on sound, tempo, um, the difficulty of the song. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. There's about there's four, Don't four, play or five. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. No. <laughs> no. They, and, no. You will be surprised if you hear what these young folks can play. Yeah. Wow. But wow. there are certain, especially in the fiddle category, there's some songs you can't play okay. that's specific to the rules. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, okay. um, but yes, uh, the and unfortunately, I'm not a musician and I don't have my judge's sheet in front of me. Yeah. But it's, it's done fire. Yeah. It's done fire. It's yeah. done very fairly. We've got people from out of town coming in and, and they're really well versed in the music mm -hmm. and have done it. They are really established and they know what to listen for and what yeah. to watch for. Yeah. Yeah. The, the way they present themselves and the song on stage is part of it. I'll have tell you anybody that plays a harmonica? We used to have the harmonica category, excuse me, but we do not this year. We what? used to have a little man from Plant City, Florida, who always came every year. To me, it. I tell you, we've got a CD coming out, and the last instrument that was put on there was the harmonica, and it's one of Earl Thomas Conley's songs. Oh, yeah. Smoky Mountain Memories, and we had to have that harmonica on it. And we, they tried it with the fiddle, tried it with the fiddle, and it just didn't make that sound. So he waited, and Craig Schlinke did the harmonica. Holy cow, amazing talent. I don't know how you can put something in your mouth and spit on it and it come out sounding <laughs> like that. I just don't get it. Who knows? <laughs> and, and who knows? We may, the harmonica may the harmonica be something. Harmonica is a lost art. It was yeah. hard to find somebody to do a harmonica. Yeah. And, and man, can he do the harmonica. Who knows? We're not dead set. This learning curve. Yeah. You yeah. know. Wouldn't we, that be awesome? Though? Yeah. Yeah. And this used to be a start on Friday afternoon event. Right, you know, we'd have a mm -hmm. professional band come in and perform, then the competition would start, mm -hmm. and it'd go through Saturday night. Yeah. And some people last year said, wow, I wish it was the same format. And, you know, it can be. Yeah. We're just ground level right now, right. and it takes contributions. Mm -hmm. So, you, um, yeah. you know, anybody that wants to help, we're most appreciative of that. Yep. And uh, it can be a huge event. Some competitions have lessons. Mm -hmm. People come in for lessons you know, several mm -hmm. days ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of possibilities for this event, and that's why I'm here, because I truly believe in it. Yep, yep. Well, we hope everybody will join, and we'll have the flyer on every day. Until then, we're going to be sharing that with you. And I have to tell you, out of all the hits that we did on YouTube or the days that we've done this show, we knew Bluegrass was it when Barry Abernathy and Mountain Heart were here. It broke records with everything yeah. we'd done. And then we did a Loretta Lynn special and it hit five times over that. So country music, bluegrass music, the music that made America is what people still love. That's what they still love. We've got some tickets we'll send. She forgot to put them in today. Okay. But anyway, we'll make sure that you get, if you'd like to have some to give away, or okay. you That'd slip awesome. one, a couple for yourself and come on up. I We'd love to have a celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to be there. <laughs> it's time for us to get out of here. Thank you so much. And again, will you make sure that your daddy gets on YouTube? Because I think that would be so important. I will. I yeah, will. I think that would be awesome. awesome. Thank you for having us. And thank you, Pa Barker. Thank <laughs> you. Thank, Barker. You. thank you. She's working today. <laughs> yeah.
That, yeah, she's a working woman. She is indeed. She's that. a very good one. Thank you for being with us today. I look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow. Remember, this program will be on YouTube in just a little bit. And uh, check it out. And remember, if you have talent, you need to be with us on June the 15th and show that talent. Thanks for being here, guys. Bye.